Hi everybody, my name is Stacy Haas. I live on the Kentucky side of Cincinnati, Ohio with my husband Michael and our four kids. Um, we have Tommy who's 13, Ryan who's 9, Kayla our daughter is 5, and our youngest son Joey is 4 weeks old. I'm a professional writer for a Fortune 500 company. I write annual reports and newsletters and a variety of electronic communications for um, all kinds of audiences, customers, shareholders, and employees. I am most proud though that I can now call myself an author. I'm very grateful to 5050 Press for nurturing my dream and bringing my book, Freedom For Me, A Chinese Yankee, to life. Speaking of which, here it is. Um, Freedom For Me is inspired by a true story and it's a story that I couldn't wait to tell, especially to young people. Um, as a woman of Chinese heritage and a great patriot of our country, I wanted to tell what I think is a truly American story of courage and triumph and patriotism and overcoming um, a lot of difficult circumstances to make a difference. Uh, I wanted young people especially to know that there were Chinese soldiers who lit, served in the Civil War. It's a fact that I, growing up, uh, didn't know and so I don't want any other kids, especially those with Chinese heritage or Asian heritage, um, I didn't want them to not know any longer. Uh, what makes me unique as a writer? I think a lot of us writers share the same passion for the written word, for the power it has to communicate, uh, not only a message, but to entertain and, and to distract um, from real life and, and to educate. So I think that's really cool. Um, what made me unique in writing Freedom For Me was the fact that I have Chinese heritage and that I could relate to this character that I was writing um, when he struggles with his differentness with um, the things that make him separate from some of the other comrades that he serves with, um, I could understand certainly um, how to write that character because I experienced some of it um, personally. I also have a degree in American history, so that background and a pure passion for the Civil War certainly helped me to write this story. Um, is my book a standalone book um, or is it a body of work? Freedom For Me right now is a standalone work. Um, although I can see other Freedom For Me offshoots that would allow me to research other historical characters fighting for freedom, and I absolutely love the idea um, of writing more Freedom For Me books. I have two other unrelated uh, books in progress. Um, I'm writing one, a contemporary fiction for middle grade readers based on two experiences that my young son Ryan have, has, have had in his life, and then um, the other is a young adult fiction based on my experiences um, dealing with being multiracial um, in a pretty white rural community. Have I ever written myself into one of my characters? I have written myself into, um, into my book. Freedom for me, certainly there were shades of me uh, based on my experiences as a multiracial person, but then certainly there are characters that are based on my husband. Um, based on my parents, uh, based on a lot of people in my life. Um, certainly none of them are carbon copies, um, and that would be true of me as well, but it does give you something um, to draw on. The people you know the most um, and are the most familiar with certainly are the easiest to write, I think. What advice would I give my younger writing self? Well, that's a tough one. I don't know. I don't know that I have any, um, and I think that's because I wrote first and foremost for me. My writing really started, um, gosh, I was probably five or six or seven, whenever I could write, um, writing in journals and in diaries and um, just trying to figure out how I felt about things or to record events. That's the historian in me. Didn't want to forget. Um, in 1990, <laughs> aging myself, in 1990, I wrote the play-by-play -play for the Reds um, World Series win, the Cincinnati Reds. So um, I did a lot of that and I enjoyed it. And so that's what started um, my writing career, and I think that's what sustains me even now. Writing a book is extremely difficult. There's a lot of research. There's a lot of just blood, sweat, and tears, frankly. And um, sometimes it's the passion and just the pure fun of it that you have to go back to. The toughest criticism I ever received. Um, I got some pretty tough criticism on an early version of Freedom For Me when I sent it out to um, a professional editor. Uh, he was just doing a test edit for me, just a quick read, but uh, the first chapter confused him, and so that was very distressing uh, to me. Um, but after a while, you kind of learn to read those comments for what they are, um, their comments, their opinion, and they're often very constructive, that if you can take the emotion out of it, um, you really learn something. And if you take that in the spirit uh, in which it was intended and get back to work, um, it usually works out pretty well. 
what did you edit out of this book and was it hard to get rid of the history for sure it was really difficult I knew so much about the historical facts the background of this story um, the character of Thomas Beck the main character of the book is based on a real-life Chinese soldier named Joseph Pierce and so I knew so much about Joseph or as much as there is to know I think and it was hard to keep all of that out especially with battle scenes too um, you know there's some pretty iconic battle scenes in this in this book there's Antietam and there's Fredericksburg and there's Gettysburg so much literature has been written about those battles and as a historian and a just lover of Civil War um, lore and history I knew so much so it was hard to, to cut a lot of that out um, but it was necessary and it was good especially for young readers I think it was important to cut out what wasn't necessary and what didn't move the move that what didn't move the book forward if I could live in one fictional world, which one would it be and why? <laughs> I think that's a funny question. It's a great question, but um, the real world is enough for me. I think with uh, with four kids and a, and a job and, and this desire to be an author, um, I can only handle the, the real world that I've got. <laughs> um, so it's hard to, to, to think about what fictional world I'd live in. I think the best answer to that is that I live in the one that I'm reading about. Um, I am reading multiple books at a time um, almost always. I uh, review books now, so I, I'm reading review books, I'm reading just pure um, books for entertainment, and then I'm reading also to learn because I'm a, I consider myself a lifelong learner, especially when the topics are historical. Outside of other books, where do you find inspiration? Certainly in the stories of history and in that of my family and friends. Again, what I live is probably the easiest for me to write, so certainly the experiences that are closest to me. Did having your book published change your writing process? It did. Um, you know, writing became very quickly something that I did for fun or as a hobby or as an aside. Um, not that I didn't have goals, but certainly I didn't have a deadline. So it was a lot different. Now that I have published my book, there's the business of marketing, you know, which is very tough, but which I try to do a little bit of each day. Um, some weeks are heavier than others. And then certainly, um, you know, I, I feel the pressure to write another book and I'm working on a couple and I'm, you know, I'm eager to, to, to get those out there. So it, it's just carving the time and, and reminding myself that when it feels like work, that it's worth it. Pick up the closest book to you that's not your own. I'll turn to page 27. So this book is called A Voice for Kansas. It's by Deborah MacArthur. Arthur. She it's a great book. It was one of the, um, the first books I read seriously to kind of learn how to write historical fiction. Page 27. I'll take that as a compliment, Papa said with a smile. Grandmother shook her head. What a waste of that beautiful dress, she said. She turned to Papa. You can still change your mind. You have a business here. There's more at stake than just a store, said Papa. Kansas must be free. Grandmother turned to Mama. Mary Margaret, at least think of your children, she pleaded. What kind of education can they have in the territory? That's it. Um, that book, again, is called A, a Voice for Kansas um, by Deborah MacArthur. Thanks, Megan. I'm sorry this took so long. Um, I hope you can work it in. Um, I'm not the best on video, um, but and I'm sorry if you can hear noises behind me. This is Joey. Um, say hi, Megan. Say hi, Steve. Say thanks for everything. We really appreciate it, and we're very sorry that this took so long and uh, that we're so bad on video. <laughs> Good luck at Books Expo. Talk to you soon, guys. Bye.